Welcome to Sunshine Cathedral's Queer God Squad. It's Friday, September 20th, 2024. I'm Reverend Dr. Darrell Watkins, the senior minister here at Sunshine Cathedral. I am Reverend Dr. Robert Griffin, the executive minister. Faith and religion can be complicated for the LGBTQ community. Surveys show that evangelical faith is the justification for the greatest attacks on the queer community. The Queer God Squad is going to explore our religious community. Let's explore the big news of the day and what it means to you. I'm Rev. Dr. Ann Atwell, the Minister of Connections. This is live and then we are available on demand. If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Join the conversation on your favorite streaming platform and social media. At Sunshine Cathedral, we're here to tell you that you are God's miracle, not God's mistake. This is the Sunshine Cathedral Perspective. It's time for Byrett Rustin to become a household name. Civil rights hero Byrett Rustin died in 1987 at the age of 75. A Quaker and a socialist, he was a nonviolent activist and the chief organizer of the 1963 March on Washington, where Dr. King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. Queer theologian and historian Kittrick Cherry tells us that Rustin was, quote, pushed into the background because he was openly gay, end quote. He is credited with quoting the phrase, quote, speaking truth to power, end quote. Some of uh, LGBTQ people consider him a queer saint. He said, quote, we need in every community a group of angelic troublemakers, end quote. The Presidential Medal of Freedom was rewarded to Rustin posthumously in 2013. When President Obama presented the medal, he remarked, quote, For decades, this great leader, often at Dr. King's side, was denied his rightful place in history because he was openly gay. No medal can change that, but today, we honor Bert Rustin's memory by taking our place in his march towards true equality, no matter who we are or who we love, end quote. Bart Rustin has a memorial seat in the Sunshine Cathedral Worship Center. And the Queer God Squad now asks you to share what you know about Bart Rustin with someone. You know, uh, this is another one of those individuals um, that we didn't study when we was a kid growing up in high school, uh, even in Alabama. There's, there's a whole list of people we didn't study uh, for various reasons, I think. But this is one of those iconic leaders, once again, uh, uh, steep in the civil rights movement, steep in the early LGBTQ queer movement. Uh, and much later in life, we learn about Byron Rustin and all of, you know, I started learning about his writings and what he contributed, not only to the March on Washington, but also other things in, in life. I remember watching a movie um, several years ago, I forget the actual name, but it was where his lover was retelling the story of their life together uh, and, uh, and how Byron struggled with a lot of things in life to be you know, to be this and to be that, but most importantly, he struggled not to be an openly gay person, but he struggled with how people struggle with him. Yeah. Uh, and one of the stories he talks about in the movie is about how he and his and Dr. King's relationship, uh, how Dr. King was so openly accepting of him, but he had to deal with other people who did not want to be openly accepting uh, about Russian and the movement. Uh, so certainly long, long overdue to be that household name mm -hmm. uh, that so many people think of. Uh, I mean, for him, for me, he brings up that with, you know, certainly with Dr. Martin Luther King, Rosa Park, and Bart Rustin, you know, that's the Holy Trinity. <laughs> that's kind of the Holy Trinity. But I think when we look at, at, at what he contributed to history, queer history, black history, even liberation history to a point of for, for where he was at his time, he was pushing the edges. Uh, and he wasn't doing it quietly. Uh, I mean, and, and another movie about Russian, you know, they had to uh, sneak him out of town one night because the heat was on and they had to put him in the trunk of a car to get him out of town to get him out safely. So he not only f did what he did for human rights, but for gay rights, but also I think just civil rights. I mean, just he, he did it all, mm -hmm. but was never duly properly thinked in his lifetime for it. I think that, you know, certainly people gave him platitudes along the way, but not this type of recognition uh, that came much later. And I think mm -hmm. he still deserves that rightful spot now more than ever before, uh, ever before that we have uh, named him uh, as a part of our sanctuary seating project. Uh, and just, you know, he's one of those silent heroes that continues to give to us today, whether we know it or not. Yeah. If you haven't seen the movie Rustin, it's a Netflix mm. movie, uh, you should do. It's, it's, uh, Another one. it 
it's a biography about him, and it's it's pretty spot on. It's really accurate. You can you, you'll learn about his life, uh, or his, certainly his political life, his adult life, uh, by watching Rustin uh, on Netflix. And I think it's not a very old movie. It, no. it might be. 22, 23, 24. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty recent. The new ones. And, uh, and certainly worth the watch. You'll notice in the pictures of him, if he doesn't smile or he'll smile with his mouth closed, but if you ever do catch it with his mouth open, you'll notice he has, it looks like maybe a missing tooth or something, but I think it was more than that. He, he, he sustained that from police brutality, his, his nonviolent resistance. And you, yeah. And, um, and so that's, I believe that was from a police baton, mm-hmm. M- maybe a fist, but I think it was a police baton. And so it was an injury. And I don't know if they were ever able to replace it. It wasn't just a missing tooth. It was an injury. And uh, it was from his activism, uh, nonviolent to the end. I believe he was very key. Well, he was key in organizing the March on Washington and up until the end. But he wasn't allowed to be a speaker, even to be on the dais. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of a last minute de- a decision, which he accepted uh, people still wanted to fight for him, but for the movement, for the cause, he said, I don't want to be a distraction, and he just stepped out of the way. Um, so, yeah, he's not only that what you see, but there's so much indignity and abuse and, you know, shade <laughs> that he had to accept, or that he chose to accept, for the good of the cause. That may be part of his Quaker tradition mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Of, of, of humility and, and, and peace and nonviolence. It might be part of his socialist uh, values. Uh, we're trying to improve society, make sure that nobody gets left out. So, so if I step out so that other people don't get pushed out, that, that's a fair price or whatever. I don't know. But he does have those things making uh, part of his value system. And I believe, I haven't looked this up, but if memory serves, I'm pretty sure that Either Strom Thurmond or Jesse Helms, I believe it was Jesse Helms, uh, knew about his sexuality and tried to use that against Dr. King. And certainly the FBI under uh, J. Edgar Hoover uh, was aware and tried to make something of it. So, yeah, he was, it was amazing that Dr. King, they eventually sort of parted ways, but Dr. King held on to him for a long time, took a lot of abuse because of it. Um, and Coretta Scott King used to say that if Dr. King was alive today, he would embrace the LGBTQ plus cause. So um, the uh, uh, Bayard Rustin is one of, is is one of my heroes, uh, and I'm glad people are talking about him more. And yeah, in in high school in, in history, I think we learned about uh, uh, Carver at 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 uh, George. Uh, George Washington uh, yeah, at uh, Tuskegee, uh, Tuskegee uh, Carver and Tuskegee uh, Institute, now University. Uh, Dr. King, about two seconds of Malcolm X <laughs> and Rosa Parks. And that was black history uh, in the 80s in Arkansas. And so, yeah, I didn't know about W. E. Du Bois until I was in college. And I don't think if I hadn't studied sociology, I would have I would have caught it then. Mm. Uh, and I was out of college before I knew anything about uh, Bayard Rustin. Mm. That is unacceptable. And uh, so we're doing what we can to, to, to not let that continue. Uh, this, this is a guy you need to know about. And if this is the first time you've heard his name, uh, Rustin on Netflix, as mm-hmm. soon as you can. Right. And there's actually a PBS documentary about Bayard Rustin. And I had not heard because of the whitewashing mm-hmm. of our history. I had never heard of Bayard Rustin until probably 10 or 15 years ago. I'm a fairly well-read person. And mm-hmm. I had never heard mm-hmm. of Bayard Rustin. Yeah. But I found this documentary on PBS, and it was so good. And I, I actually remember telling you, Reverend Robert, we need to show this in Sunshine <laughs> Cathedral. We need to show this. And we did. Yeah. We did that as part of, I think, uh, it was African American well, History yeah, Month. So, yeah. um, and it was it's so good. It's so yeah. phenomenal. If you've not heard of Bayard Rustin, mm. do your homework. Do your research. Yeah. Find out about this man. Yeah. What an incredible person he is. And the rights that we have mm. because of the work of people like Bayard mm-hmm. Rustin. Yeah, civil rights, uh-huh. uh, LGBTQ plus rights, yep. uh, all of this uh, uh, political liberalism mm-hmm. and spirituality, all mixed, all wrapped up in this one human. Yep, uh, that's that's a lot to not know about. So, exactly. <laughs> so get on the TV, <laughs> find out about this guy because he's one of our good, one of our ancestors, one of our fame, mm-hmm. one of our heroes. He's you know he's kind of one of those spokes people like you. You have a spoke and you find out he's connected to a lot of things. 
in society and people. I think it was even one clip, was it Langston Hughes and him? Am I getting the time frame right? Like there was a little deal between him and Langston Hughes that was at a party. And I think it was him and Langston Hughes got into a little a little tiff about something about who was right and who was wrong. And I just remember, I think the last line that uh, Byron, Byron, uh, Rustin said was, well, time will prove that I was correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of those moments in time, like, okay. And it, and it, like, it, and wasn't he friends with James Baldwin? He was friends with James Baldwin. Maybe it's James Baldwin thing, but yeah, maybe it was James Baldwin. I think but yeah, it was kind of funny. all there together. And so it was always kind of fun to watch how they overlapped and stuff and so even think about just some of the the, the, the theories that we talk about today uh -huh. a lot of that goes back to people like Byron Rusta you know they they formed it they shaped it and now we're living it in a different kind of way yeah and he was um, one of the things used against him is that he had a record uh, and I think it was for public uh, indecency or something you basically caught making out with a guy or mm -hmm. you know whatever uh, and that was part of the uh, during when you had sodomy laws and you know when you could just be persecuted and so you couldn't just you know deny what you just couldn't go out and you know be, so you had to find places to hide which added secrecy and shame mm -hmm. and then if you're caught now you're a criminal and that adds to the shame it was a terrible terrible system and so it was a big deal uh, i believe that that was overturned it may have been posthumously mm -hmm. that that conviction was overturned and then of course he got the medal yeah. from president obama posthumously so he's a uh i hope somehow uh, some part of him knows that uh, you know he's he's highly regarded in many circles now, and we're trying to do what we can to get that into even more circles. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's today with the Queer God Squad. We want to thank you for joining us. We're here daily at 3 p.m. to have some fun and to discuss what our LGBTQ plus community is talking about. Sunshine Cathedral is the world's leading progressive queer church. Progressive queer and God are words that naturally should go together, and we're all in this together. Remember that. You are God's miracle, not God's mistake. Until next time, we are the Queer God Squad. Goodbye.